this Optimus Prime scratches my Transformer itch. This is the Yolo Park G1 Optimus Prime. They sent this to me early. A few people have taken a look at this, but I wanted to give you my thoughts on this figure because it's been a long time since I've added a Transformer to my collection, and I'm really happy that it's this Optimus Prime. Now, immediately off the bat, when you think of G1 Transformers, you think of Diecast, and in fact, this one is also Diecast in parts too. Certain parts of his chest, arms, and legs all have Diecast metal to them, and not only that, but he's extremely poseable with so many joints and points of articulation, including the hands. But we're going to have to get into that a little bit later because I want to talk about this figure and what I like about him. The first thing I like about this Optimus Prime is the style of him. The G1 version of Optimus Prime is one of my favorite robot designs, I think, of all time. It's iconic and it's classic, and they have perfectly captured it with this figure. Now, speaking of the scale, it's about a 1-6 scale. It's a little taller than a lot of my G.I. Joe classified figures, but I would put it kind of within that because he is a giant robot after all. You would assume it's a little taller than humans. The other thing I really like about this figure is not only is the articulation just on point, I can do a lot of different posing with this Optimus Prime, but there are also fun little hidden features within it. And one of those features is on his arms, there is a communications panel that can pop out and allows you to again have those dynamic poses that Optimus Prime should be known for. Another one of those fun little features is that the eyes glow and to activate it, you need to put a magnet behind his head. And you can see there's a few different styles of his eyes glowing. I like the constant glow behind it. It just looks really good. And if you're curious what the battery situation looks like, his head does come off in that way. And you can see a button battery right there in his skull that you could replace. Now, I'm not too familiar with the Yolo Park and their entire line, but one thing I do know is that they often come in kits. This one was sent to me assembled, so I didn't have to do any of the assembly, but I imagine like all of their other figures, there is going to be some assembly required. All right, back to some of those other special features here. The chest does open up as well, and inside you will see the Matrix of Leadership. You can remove it and you can reenact the Transformers movie from the 1980s. One of the last things that I love about this figure is how highly posable it is. The hands have different levels of articulation and movement, including the thumbs. Speaking of the hands, you have the thumb that's completely independently posable from everything else. The pointer finger is on its own hinges as well. And then the final three fingers also curl around as well. If I don't hit the camera, geez. Uh, the hands, I've never had something this articulated. It's pretty incredible, and the fact that I can easily swap them in and out is just an absolute treat. And even the shoulders have kind of these kick-out swing joints that allow you to hold weapons and blasters and poses that you normally wouldn't consider a Transformer could do. That does come with a trade-off. Because you see, this Transformer doesn't transform. The play pattern of the figure is in the name, and the fact that I can't turn this into a semi-truck is somewhat of a bummer for a lot of people. Now, I said a lot of people, and this might be heresy to say, but when it comes to Transformers, the robot form is my favorite form, and I often have trouble remembering how to convert it back to vehicle form, and then back again. So this Optimus Prime scratches an itch that I didn't even know that I had. But let me have a really cool designed robot and not have to worry about the transforming aspect of it. One of the things that I wish I could change about this figure is some of the pieces will pop out a little easier than others. I've had the thumb fly off a few times, and some of the apron part here around his torso can kind of just pop off depending on how extreme I do his posing. And anytime something has popped off of this Optimus Prime, it's been extremely easy to pop right back on. There hasn't been any trouble or stiffness in the joints. It's all been pretty smooth and seamless just mild inconveniences. There are some accessories that did come in the package. So he has a set of blasters, he comes with a stand, as well as an alternate hand with his energy axe. It might seem like a limited set of accessories, but when you have such a highly posable and articulated version of Optimus Prime, a lot of the accessories aren't necessarily needed. Let's look at Optimus Prime and a few of the cool poses that I was able to get him in, and then we'll talk about him in total and what I think about it.
I really wasn't expecting such a highly posable and articulated Optimus Prime. And while I don't have the official price of this G1 Optimus, we can look at the G1 Megatron that Yolo Park has also produced and kind of get a sense of how expensive he's going to be, somewhere around the $50, $60 range depending on where you're looking. And for what you're getting, I still feel that's a really great value. So not only am I enthusiastically going to add this Optimus Prime to my collection, I'm going to be looking out for other things by Yolo Park because I'm really impressed what they did with this figure. If you like action figures, if you like Nerf Blasters, if you just like collecting things, be sure to give me a follow. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.